taser device fires bursts of electricity to deliver a high-voltage, low-amperage shock that temporarily disables the subject. Invented in 1969 by an American aerospace scientist, the taser has become a weapon of choice for police forces around the world. Today, when a police officer reaches for a weapon, it's often one without bullets. From a cartridge on the front, the taser fires electrified darts, which on impact cause muscle contractions in the target subject. The subject is immobilized, but usually recovers in a few minutes. This metal capsule contains the propellant, pressurized gas. A robotic arm inserts the capsule in a plastic chamber. The next robot places a part called the primer disc on the capsule. It contains the chemicals to generate a mini explosion that will drive pins into the capsule, releasing the gas. A protective screen is then added. That's the primer disc on the left and the screen on the right. They punch out a round piece of foam and the robot thrusts it into the chamber and tamps it down. After welding it in place with ultrasonic vibrations, the robotic arm flips the unit up and into a second plastic chamber. The placement leaves just enough space between the inner and outer chambers for wire bundles to be inserted later. Another robot tucks the assembly into the plastic cartridge. It has slots for other components like insulated copper wire bundles. A machine winds the wire in a tight figure of eight formation. This wire will electrify the darts as they're deployed, and the figure of eight winding reduces the possibility of tangling. A worker places two bundles in the designated spaces in the cartridge. He tops each bundle with a piece of strong polyester film, and this keeps the wire pack from springing apart as he slides it off the fork and presses it into the cartridge. He's now ready for the barbed taser darts. He threads the end of each wire bundle through one and knots it. He installs the darts in the cartridge using a special tool to seat them correctly. He selects plastic wedges, one for each wire, and wraps the other end of the wires around it. He attaches electrodes to allow the flow of electricity to the cartridge. The next part is called the blast door. It will break in two as the taser darts are deployed. The robot snaps it in place on top of the cartridge. The door is color-coded to signify the range of the darts. Yellow signifies four and a half meters in this case. With the compressed air cartridge complete, they now focus on the taser's deployment mechanisms. A technician installs a laser system and two LED lights in the plastic casing. The laser is an aid for aiming, and the lights will illuminate the target. He adjusts the laser's aim to sync it with one of the darts, using a bullseye target for alignment. Next, they immerse the high-voltage board in epoxy resin and pump more directly into it. This board is the part of the taser gun that generates electrical pulses when the gun is in stun mode. Once cured, the epoxy encapsulates this unit to insulate the components. He then inserts the high voltage board in the gun casing, along with the controller board, the brains of the taser, and also installs an information display board, then makes the necessary connections. He plugs the assembly into a power source and tests the laser and LED lights. He snaps on the trigger and confirms that it makes contact with the plunger on the control board. He then joins the other half of the taser casing to the one with all the working parts. Then an ultrasonic welder fuses the casing parts at the tongue and groove seams. Protecting the outer casing with a sheet of plastic, the technician welds a safety switch to the trigger. This critical part will prevent accidental firing. In a test chamber now, they activate the taser without the air cartridge. Without the cartridge, the taser works as a handheld stun gun to zap the target directly. Once it meets the tester's approval, this taser is ready for deployment. A consumer model is also produced, and like the police version, will deliver the same stunning results, though hopefully you'll never experience those. <laughs>